at Roger Pollock's salt uh, firing of his kiln and we're just about now going to uh, just loading up with salt here loading up with the salt we're gonna put it in the back of the kiln first and uh, and then we'll do these uh, front two ports here there's, there's quite a smell of hydrogen chloride in, in, the, in the air at the moment and we do this at the, every 10 minutes at the moment in goes the salt back in with the, the brick We're going to have a look at the chimney. Should be a good bout of smoke coming out there. That's hydrogen chloride gas. So the best thing is to always be downwind when Jason that is hydrogen chloride gas is it yes it is I thought so yeah yes I can I can taste it and smell it how do you think it's going so far good I'm concerned because we had to readjust those burners. So it's we, we had a bit of a. Well, tell us what happened. We had a little bit of a problem, didn't you, during the initial? Overnight, uh, we forgot to put in the passive, the bricks for the passive damper in right. the back. So as it was candling, heating up, we started achieving reduction at a lower temperature than we wanted. Usually, we don't try to put it into reduction until uh, about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. 1600 yeah? yeah okay so we found the issue at about 1600 yeah so the kiln was behind what, what, what was what was the issue what was wrong just that it was stalled out stalled um, out which means if if the reduction had been set properly we would have a, had a more efficient burn of the propane so essentially we weren't getting enough oxygen to come into the kiln and mix with the propane to achieve an efficient right. burn. So our temperature went up more slowly. More slowly. Yeah. So essentially, we just wasted a bit of gas. What happened there about the? Wasn't there some obstruction? There was. Um, when we were getting the kiln prepped uh, last minute, last night before we uh, started the burners to candle, we found a bird nest in the flue. And a had bird to nest in the flue. <laughs> uh, before we got going. Was that a starling's nest? Starling. Oh yeah. gosh. Invasive yeah. species. Invasive species. Invading yeah, our kiln. <laughs> Okay, so this is probably now going to continue for uh, salting in this first hour for every like every 10 every minutes. Every 10 minutes for the first hour and then uh, every 15 minutes and that usually takes an additional two hours or until we run out of salt. Um, we found uh, at, typically we use about 20 pounds of salt per firing. And 20 pounds. That achieves you know good glazing force. In the past uh, to, to learn the amount of salt that needed to be added, we would put test rings in the kiln. Yeah. So every time um, we, we would salt for a couple of hours and then we would start pulling test rings out to see how much glaze had built up on the yeah, surface yeah. of those rings. Yeah. And then we could determine when we had a sufficient amount and then shut the kiln down. After doing that that procedure for 20 firings or so, you got we to know that 20 pounds was 20 the, the pounds was about the, the the right amount. Kiln. Okay, and uh, that's given us extremely consistent results. So we, we've determined there's certain places in the kiln that get better salting. So they're sort of sweet spots. Yep. And we've adapted our work um, with uh, the use of just you know using raw clays or putting glazes on those. So a place that doesn't receive as much salt vapor. Yeah. Will typically put pots that have a glaze on in that portion of the kiln so they it's more of an, a reduction effect that's enhanced a little bit by the salt vapor okay other portions of the kiln where we get heavy salting we want to put raw clays so that exemplifies all the characteristics of that raw clay the mineralogy of that and the color response 
okay. you know, with the salt and the, and the glaze build up there. Interesting. Well, is it, and the next Saturday we're going to be opening this kiln. Is that right? So we yep. must, we'll be here to have a look at those results. Great. Hey, thanks, Jason. I'm going to now remove myself out of the out of the path of this smoke. Yes, you, you, the smell of the smoke and the it uh, can make your eyes sting a bit sometimes. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us and we'll be continuing here. As I say, next Saturday we'll be opening up this kiln and um, see the results. Hey, take care and keep practicing. See you. Dee, 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 dee.